so people if you can just send me uh, via chat any doubts that you have in assignment 4 okay question number 9 did you anything before that anyone Thirteen, okay. So question nine, thirteen so far. Anything else, anybody? Fifteen, achieved, okay. Any other question, people? Okay, good. So let me start with uh, question nine then. If anybody has a question before number nine, please uh, let me know so that I can start with that then. Okay, so in question 9, it says that the resultant of A and B is along the y-axis. Okay, so in the diagram below, it says the resultant. Okay, question 6 also, friends. Okay, I will, I will come back to question 6. Just give me a moment. Okay, so the resultant of vectors A and B. Yeah, friends, I will come to question number 6. Okay, thanks. Is along the y-axis. So what does this statement mean? Resultant. It means that A plus B, this vector is along the y-axis. And A and B are shown to us in a diagram instead of given in component form or anything. They are shown to us in a diagram to be like this. So this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. Now the vector B is shown to be along the negative x-axis and its magnitude is given to me in the problem as 10. So B is this vector which has a magnitude of 10 units and a direction like this. Whereas E is a vector whose magnitude is not given to me in the problem <coughs> but whose direction is given to me in the xy plane. This angle is 60 degrees, the magnitude is not. Okay. So, this information is given in the question. Okay. And what is the that A e plus B is along the y axis? So, from that, we have to find the magnitude of the vector E. Or we have to find what? The magnitude of. Yeah, we have to find the magnitude of E. So, one easy way of doing this question is to use component algebra. So, we solve this question using component algebra. Say that the uh, vector B you can see in the diagram is minus 10 i cap, and vector E will be such that E is x component will be E cos 60, so that is E by 2, and E is y component will be E sine 16, so that is root 3a by 2. So the vector E we can write like this now using these components as e by 2 i cap minus e times root 3 by 2 j cap. This is what it is. Okay. So this is a vector b and this is a vector e in terms of the magnitude which is unknown. Now so therefore what will be the resultant sum of these two vectors? The resultant of a plus b. Which you can now substitute these things here and see. That. So this will become e by 2 minus 10. That will be the x component. And E root 3 whole thing divided by 2 that will be the y component. Now what is said about the resultant? Resultant is along the y axis. So what does that mean? The resultant is the x component. Kya hona chahi? Zero hona chahi. So what is the x component of the result? Resultant is this one. So that shows us that the resultant vector whose x component in terms of capital A and B's magnitude is this should be zero. That's the only way the resultant is along the y axis. So that means the magnitude of A should be such that A by 2 is 10 or the magnitude of A should be 20 units. So this in my opinion is the easiest way of solving this question. You can also do it by geometrical method which I will show you next. But what I feel is that this is the easiest way of solving this problem. Uh, 
वेक्टर ही में अच्छा सॉरी सॉरी माइनस साइन में ओके पीपल जस्ट मेक अ करेक्शन ऑन दिस प्लस साइन ऑन दिस या दुशान थैंक्स फॉर पॉइंटिंग आउट दैट्स करेक्ट देयर विल बी अ प्लस साइन देयर नॉट अ माइनस साइन सो प्लीज प्लीज मेक अ स्मॉल करेक्शन हियर दिस इज प्लस ओके एंड दैट इज व्हाई यू कैन सी इन द बिलो स्टेप आल्सो इन ए प्लस बी दिस इज विद पॉजिटिव साइन Okay, people. So, any doubt in this method? This is clear. Now, so next, what we can also do is we can use geometry. You can also do this by geometrical method. So we can see that A was a vector like this. B was a vector like this. This angle was sixty, and we want that A plus B is along the y-axis. That means it should be perpendicular to B. So if I go by triangle law. I apply triangle law for A plus B. I'll get this kind of situation that first draw the vector E, which was like this, some unknown magnitude, but sixty degrees with respect to the x-axis. This angle was sixty degrees, and then draw the vector B. So you are adding a plus b. So to the head of a, you will add the tail of b. So b should be a vector like this, such that this magnitude is ten. And therefore, now you can see that this angle will also become six because this is parallel to the. This is your positive x-axis. B is along the negative x-axis. Now, what we want is that the resultant of a plus b should be like this. It should be along the y-axis. Because e plus b is there, right? So just think of how we do the sum of two displacements. See, any vector e is a, any vector b is a. How do we do e plus b? E plus b by triangle law, how do we do it? We first draw the vector e, and then this vector we draw it over here. From where e ends, e starts. Okay. And then the resultant becomes what? It becomes from the origin of A to the tip of B. This becomes A plus B. It doesn't matter A B ke directions kya hai. Understood na Dushan? So if we are doing A plus B here, A kaisa vector tha? A aisa vector tha? Or B kaisa vector tha? Okay. So that same thing only we are doing. It just looks a bit odd because generally we take A along the x-axis. But here he is along some random direction like this. This triangle will also look random like this. But it is somewhat more organized because I know that this is my x-axis, and I know that this is my y-axis. So that means now this should be a right angle triangle. So I can make use of the right angle triangle problem. So this angle should be ninety. So this angle should be ninety. This is capital A, and this is the resultant. Okay, so you can see over here. That for R to be along y-axis, what should happen? That in this triangle, cos 60, cos 60 degrees is cos of this angle, so it's based upon hypotenuse. So that should become how much? 10 upon E. So you can see that E should become 10 upon half. That is. The magnitude of the vector E should be known. Yes, that is the triangle law, no? Prince. That any two vectors A and B, if we want to add them, 
So a plus b हम कैसे करेंगे? We'll draw the vector e, and then from the head of vector e, we'll draw the vector b. So now the resultant will be from the origin or the tail of e up to the head of b. That is the logic of the triangle law. No? You were thinking of adding displacements. So if you are making a displacement of e plus b from starting from this origin point where you are going, you are making the displacement e, and you are reaching this point. Then from there you are making a displacement of b, so you are reaching this point. So your final position is this. So this becomes your resultant distance. Okay, so that is something universal that we apply to all all sorts of vectors. So this is the alternate geometrical way of solving the problem. You can make a quick note of this slide. So make sure you understand this at least. In general, you should know how to solve these problems by both methods. And then, of course, there's the whole thing of okay, in the exam, which method you will use so that you will get the answer faster. So that will come with practice of questions. The more number of questions you practice, the faster you will realize that okay, in this question, component method is faster. In that question, geometrical method is faster. You learn to catch these things. Okay, so now let's backtrack to question number six. Okay, then we'll come back to uh, twelve and fifteen or whatever. These are the questions that we do now. Okay, this one question. Yeah, nine is done. Six, thirteen, and fifteen. Okay, people. So is this method clear? The geometrical method to all of you. Okay, good. So now moving on to question number six. Okay, just uh, read the question and I'll explain in detail. Okay. Now, mind you, there's one more thing we could we could also use parallelogram. So since in question six also there is that thing, let me also explain. We could also use Also, we can use parallelogram law. <clears throat> Now, parallelogram law means what? What happens if if I just have randomly two vectors p e, and some other vector b like this? What what I do in the parallelogram law? First, I draw the vectors a and b, but this time not head to tail, but I draw them from a common origin. So, vectors a and b are drawn from a common origin in the parallelogram law. Then, the parallelogram is completed. And then in the same diagram of the parallelogram, we see that the primary diagonal, which is the diagonal from the common origin to the opposite side, ये क्या बन जाता है? ये बन जाता है a plus b. And the secondary diagonal, which is from head of b to head of a, this one becomes a minus b. Or if I reverse the direction of this, going from a to b, it would become b minus. B. So you know both the sum triangle and the difference triangle they are both contained within the parallelogram. So let's see how we could make use of this. So in this same question, one question only we learn a lot of things here. We had one vector e which is like this, which is at sixty degrees to the x-axis, and its magnitude was unknown. And we had the second vector b. It was like this. It was along the negative x-axis, and its magnitude was 10. And we wanted the resultant of e plus b to be along y-axis. Can you understand that this is our y-axis? So let's make use of the parallelogram law. Okay. So parallelogram law, we do what? Unlike the triangle law, we don't draw the vectors head to tail. We draw them from common origin. So it's more like actually the given diagram. So that is one more advantage. We are making use of parallelogram law. Then we don't even need to actually change the diagram. We can use the same diagram given in the question because it is already given to us from a common origin. So this is the vector e. There is the vector b. It was like this. So b was 10 in magnitude, and also here. Yeah, This angle is 60. Okay. Now, if we complete the vector parallelogram, it should look something like this. This is the parallelogram. Now, in this parallelogram, this is the common origin. So, 
which is the primary diagonal. This one is only the primary diagonal from origin to that vertex. So I want this that this should be along this axis. This diagonal should be along this vertical axis, which is perpendicular to this horizontal fixed axis. So S of parallelogram number one. So that this diagonal is actually perpendicular to the x axis. So this diagonal only is the result. So this angle should be 90. Okay. So now you use the property of parallelogram. Okay. You can see the property of parallelogram. If this side is 10, here this side should also be 10. And this side is the unknown quantity E. Okay. And if this angle is 60, then obviously this angle is also 60. So within the parallelogram, you can see that there's this right angle triangle. So it's the same as the sum triangle, right? A plus B was the first. So again, we use the same property. So your cos 60 should be equal to 10 by E. So again, that's universal. So that's yet another way. And you can see that this shaded triangle or the vector parallelogram is actually the same triangle which I have drawn above for the application of this triangle law. A triangle or the Nietzsche wala triangle is the same thing. But usme parallelogram ke under contained tha ye triangle or isme directly in triangle form. So there are so many different ways of solving a question like this. Okay, so now let's come to question number six because that also has some kind of application like this. Question six, what is happening is once again we are given a coordinate frame kind of diagram where specifically two vectors are drawn for us. Now in this question, you will see there's a high degree of symmetry for the two vectors which are drawn. They are of same length and they are at kind of symmetrical angles. One is like this. The angle is what 60 or 30. Sorry, 30. Okay, so this angle is 30 degrees. This is the vector P, and its magnitude is 10 units. And the other one is also 10 units, also at 30 degrees, but in the fourth quadrant. Like this. So you can see that this angle is 30, this vector is P, but again. The questions we have the component and the number. Again, you need to write P in component form. That will become 5 root 3. P's x component you can see is P cos theta. So that is 10 cos 30 degrees. So that will be 5 root 3. And similarly, P's y component will become 10 sine 30 degrees. So that will become 5. Okay. But when it comes to Q, now for Q, kya hoga, the x component will become 10 cos of minus 30 degrees because it's in fourth quadrant. Okay. So this will become minus 5 root 3. Whereas Q y component will be 10 sine of minus 30. Now sine of minus 30 is half of these. So that's not. So the vector Q, oh sorry, the other way around. The x component is positive and the y component is negative. My mistake. Fourth quadrant, the sine theta is negative, cos theta is positive. So this is minus 5. So Q vector we can say Q vector will become 5 to 3 i cap minus 5. So now you can directly see from here P minus Q. And just subtract the 2. So it's 0 i cap plus 10. So it's basically just 10. So this is you can say the proper way of solving the question, okay, which is systematic methodical method and all that. But because symmetry, so we will see that we can avoid so many steps. While this method is very systematic, it will always give you the 100% correct result. But we could have actually solved the question faster if we just make use of a bit of geometrical approach over here. So to solve it easily now, we can see that 
तो डायग्राम में आपको समझ में आ रहा है कि आपका जो वेक्टर पैरलोग्राम है वो ऑलरेडी दिख रहा है आपको डायग्राम में इनडायरेक्टली सो जोमेट्रिकल अप्रोच कैन सी इफ यू मेक यूज ऑफ दी पैरलोग्राम लॉ में सो इन द पैरलोग्राम लॉ में थर्ड व्हाट विल अपीयर इजी फॉर अस इज द सिमेट्री ऑफ द टू गिवन वेक्टर्स वन वेक्टर p इज लाइक दिस The other vector Q, like this. See how easy this becomes making use of the symmetry. So now you can see that this is the common origin from which you drawn P and Q. So if you just do parallel sides, this one is parallel to Q, this one is parallel to P. This is your vector parallel to that. So we मुझे क्या निकालना है P minus Q निकालना है. तो वो क्या होगा इट विल बी द सेकेंडरी डायगनल सो इट विल बी द सेकेंडरी डायगनल एंड सी इट्स पी माइनस पी सो इट विल बी फ्रॉम क्यूज हेड इट विल बी गोइंग फ्रॉम क्यूज हेड टू पीस हेड अगर क्यू माइनस पी होता तो इट विल बी फ्रॉम पीस हेड टू पीस हेड सो हियर दिस वेक्टर विल बिकम दिस This this secondary diagonal, which is going from Q to P, that one will be P minus. Q. This vector here will be P minus. Now you notice that this is a rhombus, so we can make use of that property of rhombus because this side is equal to this side. So this angle will become 90, and you can see that these are two right angle triangles. So we can see that mod of P minus Q. क्या हो जाएगा? ये वाले ट्रायंगल में twice the perpendicular, so it will be two times. Ten sine thirty. So that's how much ten. And direction is along the perpendicular to the x-axis, so pointing upwards. So that is nothing but the y-axis. So p minus q as a vector, how much will it be? It will be ten. That's quite easy to solve. Okay, so this is the advantage of you know, knowing the additional methods. That you can quickly apply something which is more convenient in a question like this. Like the trick. Okay, friends. So this is clear. Uh, so next we are going to. Okay. So यहाँ पे देखो क्या हो रहा है दोस्तों. See in this diagram. Let me expand it again. Now see in this diagram because. This is a symmetrical parallelogram, so it's basically what it's a rhombus. So we are using rhombus's properties. We are using rhombus's diagonals. They are perpendicular to each other. So this angle is 90. So that's why it's along the y-axis. And also these two triangles. Look at this triangle for which P is the hypotenuse, and this triangle below for which Q is the hypotenuse. They are both right-angle congruent triangles. You understand my point? So here, if ये वाला साइड वाई है सपोज दिस इज सम वाई देन दिस इज आल्सो वाई ओके सो नाउ यू सीन दिस इन दिस ट्रायंगल द वन व्हिच आई शेडेड यू कैन सी दैट वाई अपॉन 10 इज बेसिकली व्हाट कॉस ऑफ दैट एंगल ना कॉस 30 एंड नाउ व्हाट इज मॉड पी माइनस इट इज डबल ऑफ वाई सो दैट इज व्हाई इट इज 2 टाइम्स 10 कॉस सॉरी 10 साइन नॉट माय मिस्टेक दैट इज Sine perpendicular upon hypotenuse, so that sine. So you can. So that's how it becomes. So the magnitude is ten, and the direction is along the y-axis. Okay, now Dushan understood. Okay. So that is another way of solving the same problem. Now let us uh, move on to what we have next now. Thirteen and thirteen. Okay. Let's move on to question thirteen.
Okay, 12 also. So, you do 12, 13. Okay, so just go through question 12 all of you. Okay, so here what is It's given to us that magnitude of the vector E is 12 units. And the magnitude of vector B is 16 units. And it is given to us that their difference is such that the magnitude of the difference, that is mod of A minus B, is in fact greater than 20. So from that, what I can say about theta is theta acute obtuse 90 degrees, so what we can see. But then accordingly, what we can say about mod of A plus B also. Is it greater than 20, less than 20, equal to 20? Okay, so now we'll notice something that 20 jo hai, wo hai, 12 square plus 16 square ka square root 20. Okay, so that, that shows you something that given mod A is equal to 12 and mod B is equal to 20. Oh, sorry, mod B is 16. We know from triangle law that if theta is equal to 90 degrees, it means that cos theta is 0, then mod A plus B would have been equal to mod A minus B, would have been equal to root of A square plus B square, or in this particular case, 20. Okay. So now since it is given that mod of A plus B, sorry, mod of A minus B, mod of A minus B is in fact greater than 20. So what does that show actually? That cos theta is negative. Now because what is this thing? It is nothing but root of A square plus B square minus 2AB cos theta. So this quantity is in fact greater than 20. Now what is 20? Root of A square plus B square. So the moment you can see this, you can square both the sides and you can see that okay, A square plus B square minus 2ab cos theta is greater than a square plus b square. That means 2ab cos theta is less than 0. That can only be 1. And because of that, what about mod of a plus b? That will in fact become less than root of a square plus b square. So that means mod of a plus b will become less than okay. So, I mean, this is, I have given you the complete proof kind of thing, but if you understand that part of triangle inequality, you can understand this directly also. Okay. Because you have this relationship that if theta is equal to 90 degrees, then mod of a plus b is equal to mod of a minus b is equal to root of a square plus b. If theta is greater than 90, then cos theta is negative. So what happens is that mod of a plus b becomes less than root of a square plus b square. Whereas mod of a minus b becomes greater than root of a square plus b square. Whereas on the other hand, if theta is less than 90 degrees, then cos theta is positive. So the condition becomes this whole time that mod of a plus b is the bigger one that's greater than root of a square plus b square and mod of a minus b is the smaller one so it is less than this one is greater than and this one is less than so again these are useful you know, sub theorem kind of things of triangle inequality to keep in mind So just uh, go over this carefully because this is an important type of question. Okay. 
go over this carefully and make sure you understand all the steps. Discuss with me if you have any doubt. Okay, so this conclusion actually this is not <coughs> this is coming by a series of these steps. <coughs> वाला स्टेप तो सी मॉड ए माइनस बी मैंने फॉर्मूला से ओपन कर दिया एंड ट्वेंटी इज नथिंग बट रूट ऑफ ए स्क्वायर प्लस बी स्क्वायर तो नाउ वी आर कमिंग टू दिस स्टेप वी आर गेटिंग स्क्वेरिंग बोथ साइड ऑफ दिस we are getting that if a is greater than b then a square should be greater than b square so from that we get this so now cancel this thing na a square plus b square so we have minus 2ab cos theta is greater than c that means 2ab cos theta is less than c now in that 2ab cos theta being less than 0 a and b cannot be negative quantity they are magnitude of a vector so that means cos theta only must be the negative quantity if cos theta is negative it means the angle theta is obtuse So I'm not got theta is twenty. Go less than zero. Cos theta is less than zero. Less than zero. Okay. So friends, is it clear now the whole thing? So if cos theta is less than zero, not only that mod of a minus b is greater than twenty, but it also means that mod of a plus b is becoming less than twenty. So cos theta is negative means the difference of the two vectors will have a mod of greater than twenty now, and the sum will have a mod of less than. No, no. See, uh, Dushan, here what is happening is theta is the angle between two vectors, so it does not lie in quadrant. It, its range is only between zero and one eighty. It is when we say theta with respect to the x-axis for a given vector, then we talk about four quadrants. Okay. So one thing you have to understand clearly in these type of questions, everybody, is that when we say when theta is the angle between two vectors, okay, then theta is not with sign convention. Is not with okay, so theta. The range of theta is only between zero and one eighty. One eighty is other only is there because the then you see that this is a case of theta being active. So here theta will be some less than nine. Then if we take a case like this, where This is one vector, and let us say this is some other vector. Then we will not take theta as the smaller angle. Okay, we will take theta. I mean, we won't take theta as this angle. We will take theta as this angle. This will be theta. And in this case, you can see theta is greater than ninety. Okay, but this side won't be taken as theta, so it cannot be greater than one eighty. So theta will always be in a range like this. So when we are taking arbitrary vectors a and b, it doesn't matter where the vectors lie. The angle between the vectors only has a maximum value of 180 and a minimum value of zero. 180 कब होगा when they are exactly opposite each other. This is the vector b and this is the vector a. Then we can see that theta is 180. But उससे ज़्यादा नहीं हो सकता. Whereas when when theta is the angle of in the Cartesian system, okay, whereas If theta is the angle of a vector with respect to the positive, in this case, what is that? No, theta's range is between zero and three sixty degrees. Or we can also say that theta's range is between Minus 180 degrees and plus 180 degrees. It depends on how you are expressing. Okay, so here, for example, a 
अगर मेरा वेक्टर यहां कहीं पर दिस एंगल इज लेट से थर्टी और दिस वेक्टर so with respect to x axis i will not say that the angle is 30 degrees so because i am talking about positive x axis so here i will be taking theta as 150 degrees but similarly if i have a case where now i have a case where the vector is lying somewhere here let's say like this let's say This angle is 53. So now we will express theta depending on which system we are following, zero to 360 or minus 180 to 360. But they are actually one and the same thing. We will express theta as this. So theta is positive of 360 minus 50. So that is 307 degrees. Or we can also express theta as minus of. That's one and the same. Thing. But the important thing is that. Whether we are expressing like this or like this, it's the same meaning. Act, that the the vector is lying in the fourth quadrant. Okay. Whereas when theta is the angle between two vectors, then there is no case for quadrants. It's just a matter of whether the two vectors are lines such that they are making some obtuse angle, they are enclosing some obtuse angle, or they are enclosing some acute angle. That is the only case. Okay. So this is a very important thing to keep in mind. Right. Depends on theta. को हम कैसे डिफाइन कर रहे हैं थीटा को कंपोनेंट्स के लिए डिफाइन कर रहे हैं दैट ए एक्स इज ए cos थीटा एंड ए वाई इज ए sin थीटा देन वी हैव टू टेक इनटू कंसीडरेशन फोर क्वाड्रेंट ऑफ कांसेप्ट देयर इज इफ थीटा इज द एंगल दैट वी आर यूजिंग इन अ ट्रायंगल लॉ बिटवीन टू वेक्टर्स फॉर एडिशन और सबट्रैक्शन ऑफ समथिंग देन थीटा कैन नॉट बी इन थर्ड और फोर्थ क्वाड्रेंट थीटा इज आइदर एक्यूट और ऑब्टूस ओके okay, पीपल या सो गुड गुड दैट यू आर क्लियरिंग ऑल दीस डाउट्स बिकॉज़ बिफोर योर टेस्ट यू टू बी 100% Uh, you know, confirmed about each and every concept in clarity. So, so whatever doubts that come up, we should go through it very carefully. Anyway, so we were doing question twelve, right? And twelve is done. So now we are moving on to question thirteen. So let's go through question thirteen. Next. Uh, so this is a very interesting problem. So hexagon is of side length twenty centimeters, and which of the statements is correct? So this is one of the very tricky questions. So first of all, let's draw a hexagon, a regular hexagon. Let's try to understand what the So there are some interesting properties of the hexagon that we should understand. Okay, so I am coming to those. So one of the interesting properties of the hexagon is that if you you will see that it cuts the hexagon into triangles. So if I make the diagram properly, it will be able to show that it cuts. Diagonal like this into six equilateral triangles, such that because all the sides are equal, so all these angles are equal. They are sixty degrees each. That is the property of regular hexagon. Regular means all the sides are equal. And in this case, we are the, the sides are equal to all the six sides are equal to how much? Twenty centimeters in one. Now, see, we have to check. For example, in option one, we have to check the vector sum of AB plus BC. Plus CD 
plus b. In option b also we have to do the same. We have to check that sum. Whereas in option c we have to check the vector sum of a, b, b, c, and c. And in option D, we have to check something slightly different. We have to check AB minus BC plus C. We have to check all this. So, best here would be to convert the hexagon geometrical thing into components. Okay. So, best would be to define the vectors AB, BC, CD. And D, all these four vectors in component form. That would be one easy way. Okay. So if I define them in component form, so first of all, what I should do is I should define some X Y system. Okay. So give me a moment here. So now what I'm doing, let's say, that I'm going to take this as my x-axis. I'm going to take this thing as my x-axis and perpendicular to this, like this. With my y axis. If I have defined x and y system like this, now let us write each of these vectors. So this line AB, you can see if I pick it up, this one, it's like this, it's along the x axis. So the vector AB. Would be what 20 centimeters along the x axis. So I can write the vector EB as 20 i okay. Now, similarly, you can see the what about the vector BC? So for the vector BC, you consider this right angle triangle. So the, sorry, these equilateral triangles. So E angles are 16 so because they are all equilateral triangles. So this angle is also 16. So now see how the vector BC is going to look when I pick it up and place it here. The vector BC is like this. BC is also a vector which is of length 20 centimeters, but now this angle is 60. So BC will therefore be written as cos 60 is half, so 10 i cap, and sin 60 is root 3 by 2, so 10 root 3. Right? Now, similarly, now you can see that this angle is 60. So what about the vector CD? How will that vector be? So the vector CD will be a vector like this. Such that its length is also 20 centimeters, but this angle is 60. In other words, its angle with the x-axis, this one, this whole angle is how much? It's 120 degrees. So CD be a vector which has an x component which is 20 cos 120 so that will make it minus half so minus 10 like that and y component which is again 10 to 3. is this clear to all of you is it clear to this step okay very good and finally the vector d is which one is this one is pointing from d to d so the vector d e itself will look like this just along the negative x axis and its magnitude is 20 centimeters. So the vector DE in component form is minus 20. Okay. So I've got all four vectors in component form. Now I have to just check the options. Good. So just try this out. Okay. So the main thing is I'm using the property of the hexagon that if you join each of the vertices of the hexagon with the centroid, then it cuts the hexagon into six equilateral triangles. 
So each of these are equilateral tangents. All these angles are 60. So that particular symmetry, I'm making heavy use of that only. That is what I'm using to solve the entire problem. Yes, Dushan, very correct. The first option, which is AB plus BC plus CD plus D. Uh, so, Prince, what we are doing is we are making use of this property of the hexagon that Join the six vertices of a regular hexagon. So, because there are six equal sides, each of them will subtend equal amount of angle at the center. So, this whole 360 degree angle has to be divided into six equal bits. So, each of these are 60 degrees. So, that is the first thing. And the second thing is from symmetry, you can see that in each of these triangles, this side is equal to this side. So, these angles are also equal. And the third angle is 60. So that means each of these triangles are becoming equilateral triangles. So once you realize that, that each of these triangles are equilateral, you understand that each of these exterior angles is also 60. Because the sum of these three angles has to be 180. Okay. Similarly, this is also an equilateral triangle. Here. So these two angles are also 60. So that means if I extend this, then this also has to be 60. Similarly, if I extend this one, then this also has to be 60. Of these two verses. So put all this together and then convert these sides into vectors. So think about what is the vector EB like. The vector EB is like this. This is the vector EB. It's pointing along the x-axis. But now in comparison, think of what the vector PC is like. It's like this. With the x-axis, it is at 60 degrees on this side. And if this is 20 centimeters, then this is also 20 centimeters. Now similarly, think of the vector CD, where D is this vertex. So the vector CD will be like this. This will be the vector CD. It will be such that, you can see over here, this angle is 60. It means that with the positive x-axis, is making an angle of 120. So this angle was 60. And its length is also 20. So like that, each of these sides, AB, BC, CD, PEN, EF, and FO, they can be expressed as vector points. So when you express this as vector quantity, now I have not done it for all the six sides because it was not required. In the question, we needed only four consecutive sides. So I have expressed all these four in component form after showing these vectors in component form so with respect to my x, y, z. Now all you need to do is check out each of the options. Like option A and B is talking about the sum of all four vectors. Option C is talking about the sum of these three. Option D is checking about A, B minus B, C plus C. You can just operate these component things and just work out from that. Okay. So just complete the questions options by using these component uh, values which I have given. And then we'll also see a method of how to do this by using comment.
Okay, so hope you understood the options by uh, this thing method, by the component method. So you can see that uh, your first option, which was about EB plus DC plus CB plus DE. So kitna ho jaya? In charu ko add kar. So you see your X components will cancel and you get 20 root 3. You can see that this whole thing, it is perpendicular to AB because AB is along the X axis. You might add that. Okay. So that's how you can see that option E is becoming, I think, correct, isn't it? And option B is also becoming correct. So E is also correct, B is also correct. Its magnitude is 20 root. Now, similarly, you can check AB plus BC plus CD. So this plus this plus this. That's actually become 20 I cap plus 20 root 3 G cap. Okay. So you can see that its magnitude is 40 centimeters. So mod of this will become mod of this. If we check out, it will become 40. That's also correct. So option C is also correct. Then option D, which is about EB minus BC plus CB. So you look at this vector. So EB minus BC. So that is 20 minus 10, that's 10 plus CB. So that's this. So, this. so again, it's becoming, how much? It's becoming a null vector. If you do EB minus BC plus CB, you get a null vector. That's also coming out to be correct. So option D is also correct. Now, these same things that I have done by component algebra, there is also a way to understand them geometrically. Let's look at that also. So, geometrically, they want to do So, let's start by drawing the same parallelogram first. Sorry, the same hexagon thing. Okay, but I'll explain. Okay, so doesn't matter if it doesn't look 100 percent. So now let us look at the vectors that we are talking about within this thing. So if we are talking about the vector EB, for example, that's this vector. We are talking about the vector BC, is this one? The vector CD is this one, and the vector DE is this one. So in this diagram now we can see that the vector sum of these things, these four things, if I was doing this geometrically, just treat them like displacement sum. So I'm starting from this point E, I'm making a displacement of AB, then BC, plus CD, plus D. So this is nothing but directly the displacement from A to E. You see this is EE. So there's some way of geometrically calculating this displacement E, then we can do that and avoid all that component business at all. So this is nothing but the sum of these four vectors is nothing but this vector. 
Now we have to find the magnet and the direct current. Now that is where our geometrical tricks will come in. Okay. We will have to make use of the property of the hexagon. So we know that these angles are all 60. So let's make use of that. This whole angle is 60. This angle is 60. So first of all, immediately in the figure you can see that if you look at the vector EB, it's along the positive x-axis. If you look at the vector DE, it's along the negative x-axis. So that means these two angles have to be 90. Because see these angles are all 60. Okay. And EE is the diagonal of this, notice that EE is the diagonal of a rhombus, which one? If I label the center point as O, the centroid as O, E O E S, E wale rhombus ka the diagonal. So diagonals of a rhombus, remember we are discussing once, they are perpendicular to each other. So that is why, therefore, EE is perpendicular to FO. So that means this is along the y-axis. This is along the x-axis. And also, EE is perpendicular to EB. But EB is also along the x-axis. What is that? This getting stable? Okay. Then you can see that within this figure, we have two right angle triangles. This one and this one. So again, in this right angle triangle, this side is Y suppose. So this side is also Y. And all these sides are equal because they are all equilateral triangles. Okay. So this is also 20 centimeters. But this was also 20 centimeters. This is also 20. This is also 20. They are all equilateral triangles. So also the magnitude of E will be 2 times y in that diagram. So that will be 2 times 20 sin 60. So that is 220 into the 2 20. Yes. This is the magnitude of E. And the direction of E is perpendicular to the direction of E. So that's how we are getting this by just using geometry. So in this case, geometry thoda sa complicated. Hai. You have to get used to. It's like a you know, it's like a one of those geometrical trick kind of problems, a geometrical IQ kind of problems. Making use of the shape of the hexagon and then parallel sides, vertically opposite angles, corresponding angles, rhombus within that, equilateral triangle within that. So all these kind of various kind of tricks you can make use of. So I'll just leave this geometrical solution at that, but you can also understand how to get the other uh, the other uh, ones from this. Okay. For example, in the next uh, option, option C, you're checking AB plus BC plus CD. So you're going from A to D. So that will be actually this one, it will be AD. You can see that that's very easy actually. AD is the sum of these two sides now of, of equilateral triangle. So each one is 20, so it's 20 plus 20, obviously it's 40. So that option you check very easily. Okay. Similarly, in one you are doing AB minus BC plus CD. So it's like doing AB plus CD minus BC. So if you if you again use you know parallelogram law within this and all that, you will realize that uh, BC sorry CD minus BC will be nothing but minus of CD. If you just place these vectors BC and CD together, you will realize that this vector BC is like this and that vector CD is like this. So this is like your BC which is of 20 and this angle is 60. This is CD which is also 20 and this angle is 60. So 
that means this angle is also 60. So your CD minus BC will become this vector. Here. So this vector is okay. this vector is CD minus BC. And because these two sides are equal, so these two angles are equal. And because this one is 60, so it's an equilateral triangle. So you can see your CD minus BC is mass 20 I term. And already you could see that your AB was plus 20 I term. So it becomes very obvious from here. The sum of these, that is AB minus BC plus CD. It's nothing but zero. It's not bad. That's another way of understanding this. So, geometrically, there are always some creative ways of analyzing questions if they have some kind of symmetry. But as I said, that, that is more about you, know, you trying to manipulate things and trying to make use of symmetry. Uh, if, if you find that that's not working in a question, then there's never any need to panic because you always know that component algebra will work. In component algebra, there's no trick involved. It's just direct, you have to just apply the steps and you'll get the answer. All right, people. So I think this was question 13, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So now let us move on to question 15. So just go through the language of question 15. Okay, answer. So A and B are given to us. They are perpendicular to each other. So vector E is given to us as I cap plus U3 J cap and vector B is given to us as x i cap plus y j cap. Yes, I will check the options. So it is also given that magnitude of B is equal to 4 and also that E is perpendicular to B. From this, so one is we can use the concept that you can just try and draw and draw the vectors. So you can see that if you draw your XY system, in your XY system, the vector E was I cap plus root 3 J cap. So my vector E would be like this. It would be making an angle 60 degrees with the X axis. Because it was i cap plus 3 j cap. You can see that this angle is 60 because tan theta is a y by a x. So that is root 3. So that means that angle that a is making with the x axis is tan inverse of root 3 in the first quadrant. So it's 60 degrees. Why is first quadrant? Because both the components are positive. So vector three. Now, according to this diagram, what should be my vector b? It should be in the xy plane. So this x i cap plus y j cap, but perpendicular to this. So let's draw a line perpendicular to this one on in the x y plane. So that line will be this this kind of a line. This kind of a line. So this is the line which is. Perpendicular to so this is the line which is perpendicular to 
that vector. So now my new vector has to be somewhere along this line. So one option is that it could be one option is that that vector could be like this. Another option is that that vector could be like this. So let's say I am taking the two options as B1 and B2. But both the vectors are of magnitude 4. So B1 bonds are vector here. So B1 bonds are a vector such that it has a negative x component 2 root 3 i gap plus a positive y component of 4 sin 65 that is plus 2 root gap or it could be b2 which is exactly opposite of that so that is 2 root 3 i gap minus 2 root 3. so both these vectors have the property that they are perpendicular to the vector e in the xy plane it does not include the z axis and of magnitude equal to so now we can match the options. So you can see that one of them is one of the options. So this one is given to you as option C. So that is the correct option. Whereas this is not there in any of the options, we will not mark that. Or is it there? Ah, so this is also there. No? This is option B. So both B and C are correct. Whereas A is not any of these and B is not any of these. So the correct answer is multiple choice. So more than an option for it. So it's B and C. People have you understood this method? Because it's in 2D and this is an easy vector. The moment you see 1 and root 3, you understand that okay, this angle is 60. It's easy to do this by just making a geometrical diagram. There is a way of solving this by using algebra also. Where I won't make the diagram. I discuss that also. But again, the, the natural way to solve this, the most intuitive way of solving this problem is again this one. Okay, so Prince, uh, the options are clear. B and C, why, why both are correct? Now, another way we can do this question is we can do it algebraically. But both are lengthy. But anyway, let's for practice understand. So, given vector E was i cap plus root 3 j cap, we can understand magnitude of vector A is 2 plus square root of 1 plus 3. Vector B is x i cap plus y j cap. So, magnitude of vector B is square root of x square plus y square which is 4 okay, that is given to us okay. and given that A is perpendicular to B so that basically what is the property of perpendicular vector that A plus B okay, should be of the same magnitude as root of A square plus B square. We can make use of this also. So we have one equation which is this that x square plus y square is the square root of 4 and the second equation is this. Okay. So from equation 1, I have the relation that x square plus y square is equal to 16 and from equation 2, I have the relation that mod of a plus b, now a plus b you will see is 1 plus x i cap plus root 3 plus y j cap. So this should be equal to how much? It should be square root of a square, which was 2 square plus b square, which is 2 square. So square root of 1 plus x whole square plus root 3 plus y whole square should be equal to square root of 4 plus 16. That's 10. 
you can square both sides and you can write this as 1 plus x whole square plus root 3 plus y whole square is equal to 20 or that x square plus y square plus 2x plus 2 root 3 plus 1 plus 3 so that is 4 is equal to 20. So we have x square plus y square plus 2x plus 2 root 3y is equal to 6. So this is what equation 2 is equal Now compare with equation 1. It is telling you that x square plus y square is equal to 16. So I can replace this term here with 16. So I'll get 2x plus 2 root 3y is equal to 0. Because 16 and 16 will cancel. So you can see that x is equal to minus root 3 y. So I have this. Now substitute this in this. So we have x square plus x by root 3, the minus sign square is equal to 16. So x square plus x square by 3 is equal to 16 or 4x squared by 3 is equal to 16. So x squared is equal to 12. So x is equal to plus minus 12 or x is equal to plus or minus of 2 root 3. And then accordingly y is equal to minus of x by root. So y will become minus or plus of 2. So that means the solution the like is that x is equal to if x is plus 2 root 3, y must be equal to minus 2. Or if x is equal to minus 2 root 3, then y must be equal to plus 2. So these are the two options that we have got there. So as you can see, this is like hard algebra. This is hardcore algebraic kind of solution. So form the quadratic equation, solve it, or this nasty business of all that. But vectors wise, what property we are using of perpendicular vectors? That perpendicular vectors are such that mod of a plus b is equal to square root of a square plus b square. Ah, so Prince, see, this is what I'm doing in the question. Just go through the steps. Okay. This information was given to me. Show me uh, that A is i cap plus root 3 j cap. So from that I can see that magnitude of A is 2. And B is x i cap plus y j cap. So magnitude of B can be expressed like this. But that is given to me as 4. So this itself becomes one equation. That root of x square plus y square has to be 4. Or that x square plus y square has to be 16. So this is my equation number 1. Now what is also given is that a is perpendicular to B. So whenever two vectors are perpendicular, remember what property they have from triangle law. Cos theta is 0 no? because theta is 90 degrees. So mod of A plus B becomes how much? Root of A square plus B square plus 2AB cos theta. That cos theta is 0. It becomes square root of A square plus B square. So that is my second equation. That magnitude of A plus B has to be root of A square plus B square. So now from this, what is A plus B? Add the two vectors. So it is 1 plus x i cap plus root 3 plus y j cap. So, iska jo mod hona chahi, wo kitna hona chahi? it should be root of a square plus b square, where a is magnitude is 2, b is magnitude is 4. So, it should be this much. So, now just express this whole thing as an equation. So, you will see that you will get your second equation. This is the second equation. So, you get it in numerical form. That again, there is a relationship between x and y. So, one relationship between x and y coming from b's magnitude 
the second relationship between x and y coming from the property that a and b are perpendicular so two equations two variables okay and that is how we are getting this so now solving the two equations for the two variables we will get two two solution sets Is it clear, beta? Okay. So I'm just taking you through the final steps of the solution. So now the equation solving is little lengthy here because both no equations are there. They are quadratic terms of x and y. So luckily. This x square plus y square term gets cancelled out for us, but still takes a bit of time to solve it. Okay, so that completes the worksheet discussion. <clears throat> Now, as I told you, I'll be giving you a worksheet five, which will be a revision worksheet, which will be based on these same concepts. So we have a test coming up, and the next concept in vectors that we learn will be dot product or scalar product, which will only start in the next week. But we have time remaining, so we will do some uh, revision questions, some class exercise only, let's see, which will again help you for the test coming up. So let's do some. Division class problems. So I put up some problems and you solve them yourself. Okay. So the first question, given that a plus b is perpendicular to a minus b, okay. and E plus B has a magnitude which is one by root three times the magnitude of E minus B. So find this ratio mod A is to mod B. And secondly, find out the angle theta. We just start off with this question. I'm putting up another one, but start working on this question. Uh, no prince that is not correct and proper <laughs> just try again maybe you made some calculation mistake i will put up the answer in a couple of minutes for both the questions so just try them out
Okay, so people who all have got the answer. Yes, Aman, correct. No, uh, second question, Aman, is not correct. Sorry, first question is correct. Okay. Yes, it will be a rhombus, Dushan. That is correct. And theta is 16. Okay, so let's see. So, the first question we can do this way. Given that E plus B is 1 by root 3 times e minus b and e plus b is perpendicular to e minus b. Okay. So therefore, suppose e plus b ko x axis ke wrong okay. So suppose it is some x i can then e minus b should be perpendicular y j cap and should be such that that y is equal to root 3x and because of this. Okay. So e plus b is x i cap and e minus b is x root 3 j So this is equation 1 and equation 2. From this you can see that 1 plus 2 will give you 2a is equal to x i cap plus x root 3 j cap or vector e is x by 2 i cap plus x root 3 by 2 j cap. And whereas if you subtract the two equations 1 minus 2 you will get 2b is equal to x i cap minus x root 3 j cap or b is equal to x by 2 i cap minus x root 3 by 2 j cap. Okay. So now you can see that therefore mod a is equal to mod b is equal to this. That is equal to x. Okay. And you can see that E is at tan inverse root 3 by 2. That is equal to oh sorry, tan inverse root 3. That is equal to plus 60 degrees with respect to x axis. Whereas B is at tan inverse minus root 3 in quadrant 4. So that is minus 60 degrees or 300 degrees with respect to x axis. And the, from those above things, you can actually draw the diagram and you can understand that it's actually very much like the problem we did earlier today. But the question is asked indirectly. There was a vector drawn, there was a vector that was information diya hua hai and we have to understand how to draw the vector. So this is A, then B is like this. Set. 
plus 60 degrees B is at minus 60 degrees like this and both are having a magnitude of x each so that is why you can see that the rhombus they are forming is like this and that is why you can see that the sum and difference are perpendicular to each other you can see the sum of the two vectors is this one Difference of the two vectors so realize from geometry this is two three x j cam and from geometry this is x cos sixty so that's half. So x by two plus x by two, so that's x i. So the angle between them, so theta is equal to one twenty degrees between vectors e. So that that becomes the answer to this. E is to b is one is to one, and the angle between them. That mod A is to mod B is one is to one, and theta is equal to one to ten. This is the answer of part A. Yes, Amman, I'm coming with the second question. I will tell you the answers. Unfortunately, the answer you have given is not correct. I'll show you why. So this is the solution of the first question using component approach. So this is using component. But we can solve this question much more efficiently by using the geometrical approach because the moment we visualize that the sum and difference are perpendicular to each other, we understand in terms of parallelogram what we are saying that the diagonals of the parallelogram are perpendicular to each other. It's very easy to visualize that diagonals of the parallelogram are perpendicular to each other. का मतलब क्या है? वो rhombus है. Only one type of parallelogram has perpendicular diagonals, and that is when the sides are equal. Or it's a rhombus. Okay, so another way we can approach this uh, question is by the geometrical method. In the geometrical approach. Okay. Yeah. Okay, friends. Just give me a minute.
so geometrical approach mein friends what we can do here is that we can make use of the fact that a plus b is perpendicular to a minus b so what information that gives us let's understand that that gives us that the vector parallelogram formed by a and b has perpendicular diagonals so if a plus b is perpendicular to a minus b it implies that the parallelogram a and b as sides has perpendicular diagonals okay. so that means that parallelogram is in fact a rhombus okay. so that also means that magnitude of a is equal to magnitude of b so ye to straight away ho jata hai that ratio of a is to b is 1 is to 1 okay. but also about the angle given that mod of a plus b was equal to 1 by root 3 times mod of a minus b so from this now we can also get the value of theta the angle between the two vectors so we will see that this is that kind of rhombus where the sum is the longer diagonal uh, sorry the difference is the longer diagonal so therefore it must be having an obtuse angle if you like it's not possible that it has an acute angle it must be having an obtuse angle so this is a and this is b these sides are equal because it's a rhombus now completing the rhombus you can see that Now in this shape, you can see that this is the sum. This is a plus b. This was originally we took x axis along with that. In that way, so we would have taken our x axis along this line and just viewed it in a different way. And a minus b is this diagonal. So we would have taken this as our y-axis, this is our x-axis, and just viewed it from the other side. It makes no difference actually. So this is a minus b, and because it's a rhombus, that is why these are perpendicular to each other. So now we know that if this side is some x, and this side is also some x. Okay. Now we can see that these are all congruent triangles. These are four. The one that I have shaded. So, in fact, इसको ऐसे कर लेते हैं कि let us take this side as e instead of x. So the magnitude of e is equal to the magnitude of b, which is equal to small a, suppose. Okay. Then you can see that in this triangle, if you label this side as x and label this side as y. Okay. Now we also know that these angles get bisected. These angles get bisected. So here, what is this angle equal to? This angle will be theta by two. So I'm just taking that triangle out. Okay. So notice that triangle is looking something like this. That triangle is like this. So the vector E. This side is x. This side is y. And this angle is how much? Theta by two. So x is how much? It is e sine theta by two, and y is how much? It is e cos theta by two. Now look in look in your whole figure. You have four such triangles. So in that figure, what is happening is that your mod of a plus b in my diagram, you will see is two y. So it is two a cos theta by two. And mod of a minus b is two x 
So it is 2a sin theta by 2. So if this is equation 1 and this is equation 2, let's divide these two now. So equation 1 divided by equation 2 will give you mod of a plus b upon mod of a minus b. 2a 2a cancel ho jayega. It will become cos theta by 2 upon sin theta by 2. And that is given to us as how much? 1 by root. Okay. 1 by root. So that means cot theta by 2 is equal to 1 by root. Or you can say that tan theta by 2 is root. That means theta by 2 is how much? It is 60 degrees. So that means as expected theta is 1 by 2. So this is another way of doing the question but doing it geometrically. Make use of the properties of the rhombus. So what are the properties of the rhombus? The diagonals are perpendicular okay, and they also bisect the angles between the sides. Or in other words, the diagonals are also the angular bisectors. So I am making use of that also. Okay, understood Dushan, the geometrical method. Okay, good. Okay, now let's come to the second question. This was the information given to us in the second question. Let me just pick up the question. Okay, so A plus B is at an angle of 120 degrees with respect to A and mod A is equal to mod B. Okay, so now the moment you see this, now, this and this angle is given, you should understand that it's first of all, the geometry method will be easy. Why it will be easy? Because mod A is equal to mod B means it's an isosceles triangle. Okay, and the angle is also given. So solving the geometry is going to be easy. We will understand solving the geometry is going to be very easy. So let us see how to interpret this now. So suppose this is my vector E which is of some magnitude. Now I know that the resultant of E and B is what angle 120 degrees with A. So the resultant should be somewhere here. It should be like this. This should be in fact the resultant should be such that magnitude of B is same. So it should be too long. Probably like this. This should be 120 degrees. Okay. And in that case, the vector B should be 
should be like this. Now we want the condition that magnitude of vector v should also be t. Okay. So if magnitude of this is equal to this, okay, that means this angle should be equal to this angle. Alright guys, this clear? Okay. Ah, so that is the interesting thing. That it seems impossible. It's not this angle equal to this angle. It is this angle. So if this angle is alpha, then alpha should also be equal to 120 degrees. But that's not possible. Okay. So you can see that it is not possible. then E plus B is at 120 degrees to A. This is not possible. Now let's understand why it is not possible. Okay. Because, see, these two sides are equal. So this angle should be equal to this angle. Let's say this is beta. So beta should be equal to alpha, these two angles. But if alpha is 120, because beta is 120, because given to us that beta is 120, it's not possible because the sum of these two angles is only becoming uh, this thing, 240. Okay. So this case is not possible. Now how we can show this by formula also? Okay. By formula we can show that when we normally draw a vector triangle like this, suppose this is some E, this is some B, okay. and the resultant of these So, if this angle is alpha, if this angle is theta, this is A and this is B, we have that formula that tan alpha is equal to B sin theta upon A plus B cos theta. Now, let's try to solve this for the situation where, right, so if I'm solving this algebraically, I'll just use the formula. Now I won't be drawing the diagram and all that. If I'm solving this algebraically, I will just put the condition that alpha should be 120 and mod a should be equal to mod b. So now I just want to solve this. Okay, so we want to find theta for alpha equal to 120 degrees and mod a equal to mod b. Okay. So tan 120 should be equal to a sin theta upon a plus a cos theta. So tan 120 is now that minus tan 60 should be equal to sin theta upon 1 plus cos theta. So we can see that minus root 3 should be equal to sin theta upon 1 plus cos theta. Now you can expand this by this thing. Uh, you can expand it by a half angle. You can write this as 2 sin theta by 2 cos theta by 2. You know half angle in trigonometry, no? Yes, and you can write 1 plus cos theta as what? 1 plus cos theta can be written as 2 cos square theta by 2 minus 1. So that is 2 cos square theta by 2. So we will get this as sin theta upon 1 plus cos theta can be written as 2 sin theta by 2 cos theta by 2 upon two cos square theta by two. So that is nothing but tan theta by two. Now you are getting tan theta by two as minus root three. According to this, now this is not possible. Why it is not possible? Because see, theta is specifically between zero and one eighty. Theta in this case is specifically between 0 and 180. Just a moment to be like, need to refresh the whiteboard. 
just give me a moment. So yeah, with theta kya tha? It was an angle between two vectors. So it can't be in third quadrant and fourth quadrant. Theta is either acute or obtuse. It's between zero and one eighty. Okay. So that being the case. Just a moment. Okay. So theta being obtuse, what we can say about theta by two? It has to be acute. I mean, theta being between zero and one eighty, theta by two cannot be more than ninety. Huh? Yeah, so I'll, I'll just complete the working for everybody. Here. Okay, so now you can understand this from here that the fact that theta is between zero and one eighty. That means theta by two is less than equal to ninety degrees. So therefore, tan theta by two is always greater than equal to zero. It cannot be negative. So therefore, you can see that this equation therefore is Not possible. So that was the conclusion in this question. That only two vectors of equal magnitude as a whole can be said. That means their sum that will be making an angle of uh, you know the, this thing. That will be making an angle of 90 degrees. With, uh, sorry, 120 degrees with respect to the vector. That's not logically possible. If it had been 60 degrees, yes, it's possible. If it had been 53 degrees, yes, it's possible. But 90 degrees, uh, sorry, greater than 90, like 120, it's not possible. Okay, people. So hope this is clear to all of you. Okay, so that's why we conclude today's session. And uh, as I told you, I'll be giving you a worksheet five, which you can, uh, which will be a revision exercise. You can try that out in the next two or three days. Attempt the questions and discuss with me if you have any doubts. And that should be enough to prepare you for the test coming up on Sunday. So just, maybe uh, the ninety will be possible, okay? No, because you cannot have an isosceles triangle. Where the third angle, when the where one of the angles is 90, getting the point. If you have an isosceles triangle, then two angles are equal, and one of those angles is the other one, you know. So it it has to be an acute angle. That's why. The equal angles cannot be 90 to be acute. Okay, that's it. Thank you, people.